Welcome to Renaissance Charge Videos. I'm Rick Friedrich and I have some very important announcements to make here. I've got two new kits and I want to talk about them today. Uh, this is not scripted so bear with me. don't really have time for videos anymore but uh, some people keep asking for them so I will share them. So what we have briefly is the new dual pole motor mini and then the resonance um, renaissance resonant resonance induction coupler kit and so we'll go over both of them um, so briefly this is um, a, a beefed up mini kit which is now the only thing that we'll be selling. We will no longer be selling the other, other model. And again, the other kit is um, something brand new. And people have asked over the last couple of years, what is this third stage process, which I've talked about, which we run on the back end of this motor. And that's what this is going to teach you about. That's part of the purpose of that kit. So we'll get into the details of those kits, of that kit, if you uh, wait for the timing in this video later on. So let's go over this kit first, um, the four pole. Now those of you um, uh, who have been around for a while We'll have seen the differences. There's a lot of upgrades over the years. So this is going on about oh five years now since we've had this particular kit. So now what we have, um, this frame right here is not part of the kit. And I'll go over that in a minute. This is just to add a generator onto it and to really hold this whole motor down because it's so powerful. But anyway, what we have done over the years is upgrade this motor. Um, we have used the same plates um, over the years. So it's in a 6 inch by 6 inch frame. And this is Lexon material here. Uh, but what we've done is upgrade the circuit, uh, the coils, the rotors, and now you know the shaft and the magnets. So briefly, what is the difference between this motor and the other one? It's many times more powerful. Exactly how much will remain to see how far we could push this. You have to really load this thing down, otherwise it will literally level, levitate. It will spin extremely fast, and this is only at 12 volts I'm talking about. <laughs> Wait until you go up to 48 volts. Um, so today we're just going to do 20 or 12 volts, and then we'll gradually go up from there. <clears throat> so what we've done is um, gone from 3 16th inch magnets to half inch by half inch magnets. <clears throat> now we've reduced the size of the mag or the number of the magnets. We've got four in each rotor instead of eight. Uh, and that has to do with the, <coughs> the, the necessary gap between the magnets. If you have them too close, it's not good. You don't want the magnetic fields to overlap. You want an off time. <coughs> so the generator coils do not function. Well, we'll go over that in a minute. Whoa. The generator coils do function. <laughs> they just don't. Um, they don't work the same way as the older model <clears throat> because of the fact that there's only four magnets rather than eight magnets. So when you short the coils, it doesn't speed up as we were doing before. But that's not necessary. That was something I was showing. Um, for a specific reason, and we'll get into that a little bit later on. So, okay, so what we have is 
bigger magnets. We've got over a half an inch rotor, so it's really a lot of flywheel mass here on either side. It adds two pounds to the whole kit. It used to be five pounds, now it's seven pounds. Um, so three eighth inch shaft, before it was a five millimeter shaft. Um, I was trying to go European style with the millimeter and it was a big mistake. <laughs> so I went with back to American. Um, and then we have uh, 19 um, gauge wire on the cores or the coils with bigger cores, different cores now, and um, it makes a fundamental difference. The whole motor is completely different now um, in that we have a tighter gap and bigger magnet, uh, bigger magnet and bigger pole pieces. And so what's happening is it's, it's, all, it's a, a traction repulsion motor. It's not a traction in the sense that you're um, consuming energy to attract. That's normally what's considered a traction mode. Uh, we've never found that to be beneficial. There was a lot of hype about that and maybe under certain, certain motor conditions that might be advantageous, but no, never for these either monopole or dupoles. I've never found them to, to be that way. Anyway, but we are utilizing the attraction mode in the sense that the strong magnetic, the strong magnets pull into the pole pieces and then they literally glide across top dead center, which is nice. Um, and then they, um, then you break the magnetic lock by, in a repulsion mode. So there's a real, there's something really to that. I'm not going to get into all the details. That's based upon my research and I will produce products based upon my research. Um, I'm not necessarily going to go into all the details of everything I know. Anyway, the point is that this becomes a much more powerful motor. It's so powerful now that it's hard to run it. You have to really consider holding this thing down because it wants to take off. Now, briefly, <clears throat> there's a gap here that's really tight right now on this. And of course that will make sure the magnets <clears throat> will never come out, but that's not the reason for it. <laughs> but anyway, that's uh, one good part of this is that there's no way these magnets could ever fly out and hurt somebody. However, I will say that if something is, you know, stuck to it, you know, a very small piece of something, some metal, and it spins, that could be very dangerous because it, once it flies off, then it could really hurt somebody. So you have to be really careful with this motor. This is really not a toy. The previous models were more like a toy. So this is a real workhorse. This is going to be capable of, of um, probably half a horsepower. Um, I, I mean, you could run this at high voltages in the, um, you just have to replace the MOSFETs on it. Anyway, what we're doing, this is the double stack model here. And the difference is in the gap here, I've got a double spaced, two spacers in there. And um, that's why that one, that's probably the way people are going to normally run it. So that it's not so cogging. Um, and, but this is a more powerful mode right here, but it's a lot more vibration. So I decided to show both here. Anyway, um, so, um, I think that's all the, oh, and then the upgrades on the circuit board are that, um, well, we, which we did recently with the other older kit, uh, going to Adreno board and um, 
Oh, it's going to have two MOSFETs on it instead of one. So two coils for one MOSFET, two coils for the other MOSFET, and then four generator coils. Uh, this will not have the ability to run, um, well, if you had two independent circuits, you could run um, the other coils um, out of phase, you know, so you could do that if you wanted to, but there's so much power already that we actually have to load it down. So we load down the, the generator coils, they don't put that much uh, the load on the motor, so, because we made this as a motor, this is not the same thing as we used to do. The other one, I was, a, I was trying to do a different purpose, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And we can still do that purpose with this, but this one is going to give you a lot of torque at the same time, which is what I found most people wanted. This kit is to go into the other aspect of, um, of what I was trying to move towards in the earlier model of this kit. So anyway, um, so the Adreno board, we've got two MOSFETs on here. They're 100 volt MOSFETs and the gate driver works really well with the and we've got a fast switching diode here and um, we have various code different code uh, we have code that can keep a desired rpm um, it regulates the motor to keep the rpm we have code that is whatever frequency you want during the on time uh, we also have other features like what we call the liberty pulse which allows um, changing of the frequency every tenth of a second to create um, a better effect for you biologically um, so that you don't have a continuous exposure to a continuous frequency which isn't really healthy for you. Um, and we have some other features also in there um, that we are always adding um, to and multiplying out many different codes. So that is, is just simply connecting up to this USB um, port here on the board and then just simply uploading it on from your computer to a free program. So, um, so those are all the different features and upgrades in this kit. Now, let's go over some details. Um, the generator I got, you might have seen the smaller version of this on uh, previous videos. The little version, it's a three-phase generator, and the little one works really well for the size. It can really put out quite a bit. I mean, of course, these are not efficient motors. All the motors out there are terribly inefficient. Um, but, you know, these were cheap. I mean, this one's about $30, and they actually, usually China overrates their um, capacities and capabilities, but these can actually put a, produce more than what they say. Um, so we'll see the extent of this um, as we run it under different conditions or different kinds of loads. So what I have here is not wired properly. Let me just make this statement from the start. I do provide these clips and this is really only for low power application. If you're going to run this thing at um, beyond 12 volts, this will produce, this will draw about 8 amps under these, the generator coil being loaded and uh, the generator coils loaded and this generator loaded, it will draw about 8 amps. Now if you put more of a load on this, because it will still be spinning pretty fast under load, you'll see in a minute, 
um, it will draw more amps, but typically that's a pretty decent sized load for 8 amps. So we're at about 100 watts there. Um, and that's why I was saying this is like a 400 watt motor if we go up to 48 volts. Um, of course, as you raise the voltage, the amperage is going to draw more to under if you have a big enough load. Um, but I'm going to limit that recommendation, um, you know, to not go too, to not take this too hard. I mean, you're really going to have to hold this frame down. And if you're going to push it to those extremes, you might want to drill out the holes and put uh, bigger uh, frame bolts and so forth. So I created this just to hold this, and it's kind of wobbly. It was just throwing it together real quick to just test it out. This is actually for my other prototype when we had the um, five millimeter shaft and I was trying to run this. It was crazy. Um, so anyway, um, the only thing that I don't have on this kit right now is the ability to mount the hall. You can mount it off of one of the legs here. It can't, it can no longer fit between the frame and the rotor because for one there's no room, two, I never had this hall switch under the um, motor coil because it's south pole turned on and what happens is when you are pulsing the coil, when you're turning on the coil, it then of course has its own pulse and it throws the whole hall switch off. So you could never really run the hall on that side of the motor coil. So on this side, the rotor side, you're going to have to run it. So you could easily run it on any of these four legs here if you put the motor coils on the corners. Um, and I did do that, yeah. So anyway, um, I had previously done, if you want to mount it on a, a board in the center, then you just have to mount the motor coils um, on the sides instead of the corners. Now, what we do is put all the motor, all the motor and gener generator coils are the same, so we just put them all in the same direction with the lettering on the bottom of the coils facing downward. And then you'll see the instructions in the kit as to how to wire it. It actually comes completely um, assembled um, on the board. I figure if I try and give instructions there, so many people are gonna mess up and waste my time. It's not worth it, so I just decided I'm gonna assemble these boards and then I w you could have the motor part assembled or unassembled, but I'm going to actually have these with the wires hanging off of it too, so for the unassembled kit. Now, what else here? So, uh, one of the goals that I've had all along, and I've said this before, was for the motors, the motor to take care of itself. You've got one battery charging and another one discharging, and you can rotate them around. Now we've talked about that's being stage one, where you run the batteries back and forth. It's the basic mode of this motor, and and that's all fine and dandy. And that's kind of what people wanted and then they could have the torque and use that to run whatever loads either mechanical load or create more charging like what we're going to do here in a minute now what we found was or what I showed what a year and a half ago two years ago now was the second stage process which was running the motor between two battery banks 
while still charging a third battery bank like we're doing here but just adding another battery bank so that we run say 24 volts into two 12 volt batteries so they have four equal batteries and then you run the motor in between the two positives and you connect up the negatives and then once this is discharged this is charged you flip them around 24 here to 12 volts there and so forth so that's what we call the second stage process and um, in order to really benefit from that you have to have first of all pulsing um, which you have to have a pulse motor for that to properly work and then what we're getting into is resonance um, when you actually have this in resonance which this is what this kit will will be moving in towards that especially with this new kit talking about that um, then you could have the situation where the batteries can always be rotated while you're still charging the third battery plus your mechanical energy production which gives you a fourth battery bank being charged <laughs> or whatever mechanical power you want and so that was what we called the second stage process. You could use the same thing with the solar panel as your, um, like the 24 volt, for example, going into a 12 volt battery bank, like we were talking about. And then you could, instead of having a regular solar panel controller, you could use the motor. And then the motor would have torque and battery charging while you continually charge the battery as you would with the solar panels before. Now you have to have double the voltage input um, so it wouldn't be um, the same with your solar panel, you'd have to have the double the voltage to do that. So anyways you'd still be charging your batteries pretty much like you were before because the energy would be going through the motor to the batteries so to speak and now you are running the motor just like you would run your controller and you could control that so forth so this could still be doing that um, the only thing is that this doesn't self start anymore because we have the capability of it stopping over the motor or the generator coils it won't self start in that situation but it will start st uh, self start in this mode now you could overcome that by hooking a, a relay. We could set that in the code so that we could put another MOSFET on merely the pulse, the generator coils, you know, and then get it started. And the good part is too that it can run in either direction. So anyway, going on to now the third stage process, which we called um, in the Loving Path series, we have on the output um, going to the charging batteries which is the bigger thicker wires here this battery on the way to the output we have yes series resonant circuits there we go there's the cat out of the bag um, and actually I wasn't even showing in any of the videos um, in resonance so that's you know you can even be out of resonance and um, and still get a really good result so sometimes like in my meetings I was showing the box um, running in resonance in which there was a really high output um, and also blew out the whole motor because there's too much power <laughs> so we've worked on that and we've added um, some modifications to the circuit to prevent when the power is coming back into the input as we were talking about or showing we were worried about the semiconductors the MOSFETs and transistors receiving too much energy and then blowing out so we've um, we fixed that or solved that problem uh, relatively easy and 
uh, are including that in the kit as it is on this port. So again, what it is, the third stage process is a multiplication of the energy. So you're charging this battery, but now you're going to be charging another battery. This is basically kind of like Tesla's one wire. We're going to talk about that in a minute, one wire circuit. And, um, well, it is the same thing, exactly. Um, so this is something where this could be a prime mover, and then you can run various loads and multiply it out. Um, so it's a mystery, but it shouldn't be. Um, it should be well known by now in the whole free energy community. <laughs> Um, all of these things are very basic, actually, um, and it's it, it's a marvel to me um, studying this, talking to thousands of people all around the world, just how much, how little is known, even of the basics of this technology. Now, res resonance is more like an in intermediate level of knowing this technology. Um, the basics are like like based basically getting a system that can charge maybe another battery at the same rate as discharging, not having to, to do really any tuning, just really knowing that you can do that and knowing how to do it would be what I consider the basics. And, um, you know, a good number of people have come to that, but not enough considering how easy that is to do. Um, anyway, so let's say that resonance is an intermediate level of understanding. So, so what we can do is add this, we'll add a product um, to this particular motor that's designed to do that just after we introduce this. Uh, literally next week we're going to start shipping uh, these new kits. And this one I've started shipping just this week. Um, so anyway, what we'll do is we'll have this extra process where you can um, attach it to the motor and then with the right code you can um, tune it so that you can have this thing properly in resonance. And there is a lot to know about resonance so it's not as it's a simple concept, but uh, there's a lot to understand. This kit that we're going to be showing is going to um, get right into that. So you don't need to know everything to make it work, and that's what's important. That's what I'm about. I'm trying to demystify things, not make it so you feel like you have to have some graduate level uh, understanding before you can really do anything. And, and that's what I've always been about, uh, trying to show you how to have a practical system. Uh, so, so this motor can do all three processes, as I call them, stages. And, um, and then it can be stacked. I'm going to say we can go up to three layers here comfortably. But uh, look how. So I mean, I would say this would be an easily a thousand watt system if you triple stacked it, which is reasonable for a household. What I was trying to do with this is accomplish the 400 watt, um, which is the 400 watt output, so that that matches the um, average world household energy usage. Um, so if it was 400 watts with one section, it could easily do 1,000 watts. So um, now, mind you, this is not a little tiny toy. It's really moving, <laughs> as we'll see in a second here. So we're also going to do the same thing with the bigger motors eventually. And that is... Um, what we're trying to do is make sure that we have the right core material for the optimum 
uh, resonance response. Um, and so we will bring that out in time. Um, I'm not sure when exactly, but sooner than later. Anyway, this is the kit. Let's, uh, let's get it. Oh yeah, let's get it going and just briefly show you. I'm not going to try and prove anything. Like I said, in my videos or in, uh, um, yeah, I'm not going to ever try and prove something in a video. This is merely to give you an understanding of what's going on. So what you have is a little battery right here uh, to run the Adreno board. Uh, we do that to make sure that it's very sensitive to spikes. So um, this is a charging battery, 1246. It's the input battery. 1312. Hmm, the Renaissance batteries that sit at 1312. That's been sitting like that for quite a while. <laughs> uh, 1257 on this battery off of this generator. And then we'll eventually do this battery too. So let's give it a go. And I'll put the amp meter on it here. You might not be able to see it, but I'll say the amps. So, So this is going to be loaded down. We've got the LED on there and we've got this battery um, able to charge here. So this is already, oh no it's right there. Now I want to be able to adjust it. There's a little trimmer pot here. I'm not going to start it in full because um, it would be quite a big, big pulse on there. But you could start it probably at full at 12 volts. So it's charging the battery, of course. So as the RPM speeds up, you have to change the um, on time or the ball. But we can do that in the code too. So you can see as we change um, the position of the hall, the, the amperage being drawn is higher or lower, the charging rate is higher or lower. And it's not necessarily um, at the same phase as the RPM adjustment. Like there and there, you can see the light, the generator coil response, even though the RPM is pretty much the same. Um, that's really bright LED, and it's kind of hot. So now, so this is our, this is 13, 18, under charge. This one, twelve seventy nine. Now, this is just running straight generator, no, no pulsing. Um, three phase converted to DC with a cheap cap here, right? All right, so now what I want to do
Now I'm going to take this off and then we can see the difference while I run it under no load and then I'll add the extra battery Okay, so now it's going to speed up a lot faster, so let's look at, this should, so 1270 on that, and then we'll see how much faster it goes. That light bulb was about a 50, it was a 100 watt LED, so at least 50 watts of power on there. So now watch what happens. <laughs> it's a little too fast. It gets up to past 10,000 RPMs very quickly without a load on it. Now mind you, it is a load because it's really close to those coils. It's really close to those coils, um, so that it's you know quite a drag on there, of course. So now what we're going to do, what we have here is pretty expensive photo flash, 300 volt, 10,000 microfarad cap, and so this is a really Malroy, good, really good cap. So we're going to do the SCR cap dump, which is what I've, I've used this for years, and it's it is a um, energy pump, and it's not what you think. <laughs> it's a very simple device um, to create a gain, and that's why even these little tiny yellow caps, 10 microfarads. Um, can, um, when pulsed this way, can actually have quite a big gain. When you think about the, um, if you do the math and you look at what's going into the cap, or what the, the microfarads over, over time, every pulse, adding it up, it doesn't add up to what the effect is in the battery. So, with this cap, it's a low uh, ESR photo flash cap and it's going to give you a lot better gain than this particular yellow cap and not to mention it's a bit higher voltage and quite a bit more uh, microfarad. So um, now the drawback of what we're doing here is that we're not using the best wires and all that. So ideally on the output you have straight big copper buses and we're going to get into that with the Tesla patents, Tesla research. <laughs> yes, I've read it all. And um, so there's a lot to know in that but you got to do what you got to do and um, you know, we're not trying to do the ideal here, we're just trying to do something. So let's look at the voltage on this, we can. So it's 11.86, so we'll try with and without this battery connected. Now this represents more of a an actual charge 
rather than this kind of charge can be more of a, um, it's a high voltage charge. So the under charge, the voltage is higher. Um, it's a little bit, it's not misleading, but it's, you have to be aware of the different kinds of charge. This one is putting actually quite a low voltage pulse over the battery, but it's more of a, it's kind of like an amperage charge. Uh, it's got both. It's got the positive and the negative energy, if you want to call those terms. So we're looking now, and if I disconnect this battery, so this is really going, it's only at five. Okay. I'm going to make sure I hold that all the right way. So there's about seven, about eight amps there, about six, seven amps. And then when I add this, you see that cap was being really charged up. So now it's at eight, eight amps. Now if I was to load this down even more, it's going to draw Actually, so we got two MOSFETs on there, it's no big deal. They're not even getting hot. We could run LEDs here. If I could do this with one hand. charge up this battery a bit and then we'll just take a look at the battery voltages this is not trying to show all the efficiency of everything but you can see this particular battery is going to hold now that's re measuring um, pretty close to real charge it's going to come down only a little bit uh, but the battery has this is 35 amp hour batteries here and um, so this one, we'll just go over the voltages really quickly so you can see it. I don't want to make this too long of a video. Uh, 1266. So that's an inferior type of charging because it's not the right kind of pulsing um, like we have with the SCR. So this is at 1280, 1279. And this one it's gone down to 1294. <laughs> How's that for a resonance, re a renaissance charged battery where you have a higher starting voltage? Just like I said for years about my Porsche, uh, my electric Porsche, where I um, would start off at 11 or no, sorry, um, 156 volts at rest and then drive for 10 miles and I could actually let the car sit um, or it would, it would come to a rest 
after 10 miles at, at uh, 153 volts, which is still higher than, or considered fully charged at that point. So that's what happens with our batteries, is we have higher top end capacity and higher low end capacity, and of course everything between. That means we have, can deeply, dis, uh, deeply discharge our batteries, we still have real capacity, where normally a battery would just drop off. And that's with our Renaissance charging systems. Anyway, so what we want to get into now is the kits, the next kit. And so what I want to talk about um, a little bit is history. One thing, um, well let's start off here. I'm about to do a video for this kit that's not going to be public. It's a um, it's part of the kit, and I'll go over the details of what I'll say briefly here. So this is kind of like an introduction to the kit. So now, what I found is over the years, um, there's a reason for this kit. There's multiple reasons actually, and I'm not going to tell you all of the reasons for it, but um, these are the basic reasons. Uh, one of them is that I talked to thousands of people all over the world for many years now in this technology um, and I find that people even 15 years into this just don't know where to go. They just don't know what to do. They're all confused because there's a deliberate attempt to put out so much information that you don't know what to do with it. So you have all this information, but you're just not sure what's important, what's not. And that's where this kit, I mean, this kit is already showing you everything you really need. Um, but for those who want to go further into the research and understanding resonance, for example, uh, they just don't understand really how to begin to look at this. So. What I'm recommending is also the historical perspective. And what I've found is um, there's very few people who understand uh, the history of this technology and who don't, they don't, most people, even engineers, don't really realize how things got started. Um, they're not familiar um, with 100, 150 years ago. And take, for example, the induction coil. Um, I found that most people didn't even know that they had an interrupter on them, a pulser. And that was so fundamental to the process that they were after, uh, that they were using at that time period. And people today largely didn't understand that. So I tried to give a little historical perspective there and then with Benita's patents and demonstrations there. And um, what I want to do with this kit is also get into the history a bit and especially with Tesla. Um, so let's just say a few words about Tesla again. So I've recommended this book before and I'm not going to recommend it anymore. Um, there is a lot of useful material in it, but I have given it a 2 out of 5 on Amazon. You can read my comments there about it. Tesla, the truth about Tesla, the myth of the lone genius. And um, I have to say this publicly because of, I had recommended this book. I want to clarify that uh, this author, Christopher Cooper, did not um, know Tesla very well. And he made a fundamental mistake in his accusations against him on the point of resonance. So this was very disturbing to me that this man could have ignored 10 years of Tesla's life, critical years, the most important years, the 90s, 1890s. And so if you want to know any of this stuff, you really have to go back to the three lectures, 90, 1891, 1892, and 1893. 
And I pointed that out over the last couple of years. And you have to understand Tesla and all this technology in history. In other words, in its time period, if you're going to read somebody, you have to understand their context, where they were at in their research, especially Tesla, in order to interpret them, to really get a feel for them. And like just because if Tesla is considered an expert, I think he is, I will say this, that I think he is a father of the high frequency uh, technology. He, he wasn't the originator uh, by any means, but he really pushed it forward. But if you're going to try and understand Tesla, you have to um, know where he was at when he said something. Because there's later and, and earlier with all these people, you know, there's later Tesla, earlier Tesla, and what may be important at the beginning isn't so important later on. Um, so just because somebody said something and they're considered an authority doesn't mean um, it's the most accurate thing or it's understood in context. And so that's very important. And so this kit, I want to try and bring that perspective um, because there's a lot, there's a lot of confusion along those lines. So anyway, these are all the relevant Tesla patents. There's almost a hundred of them in here. Um, at least 50 that are really important. And yet, I bet most of the people have not even read more than a few of them. And so, if you're trying to find the answers in somebody today, just forget it. Go read through these patents and you won't need anybody else. You won't need to watch another YouTube video at all. Um, but you want to read those lectures as well. So anyway, this kit is going to be very much related to these patents. So what we try to do is um, give you what Don Smith had recommended, a similar kit, and it's available but it's not it's not showing you what we're showing you um, it's more of a thing for a school and it's just showing you some basic electronics phenomena and wireless but it's not showing you really um, all the details in fact the kit itself isn't as important as the documentation that's coming with the kit and the learning experience of actually seeing the things for yourself. So what it comes with is two of these. You can get an extra coil or, or more than one um, coil. And then you get a um, frequency generator here. Now usually people are going to spend about a hundred bucks on a frequency generator. This comes with the kit. It's a $90 kit. And it comes with the kit. You can either have this assembled or unassembled, but it also comes with an amplifier, which when you get the kit will be assembled and it will be um, in addition to this. So this by itself isn't going to be enough without the amplifier. And then of course you get the, the bulbs and wires and so forth and all the information and most likely a DVD video. And so um, we tried to make this look old, kind of like this is a one of the original crystal radios here. So we try to make it look like, you know, came from the same time period. And you could make this into a crystal radio as well. Um, we don't provide that we didn't think it was necessary. Other people are focusing on crystal radios and and that's just something very few people are interested in. Um, and we don't want to really focus on trying to get energy from something that somebody else is paying for. You know. But anyway, this is a crystal radio and 
you can see there's the, the crystal and so forth, but I won't get into that. So what we're going to show here is with this is resonance. Now, resonance isn't just as simple as people like to think. Oh, you're in resonance or you're not. It's not that um, simple. And I think there's a lot of confusion about it. What is resonance? Um, is it important? Like the first question, the most fundamental question in all of this research is, is there a benefit to resonance? Answer yourself that question. What is the benefit? Really? Um, what's the difference when you don't have resonance and when you do? And, and that's going to be the big homework assignment. So this is going to show you that it's not all the same. In other words, there's a lot of variation. And I'm not going to get into those details in this video because that's what the kit's about. Now, the second thing is um, one wire transfer. So we're going to get into Tesla one wire transfer of energy without a return wire. And that is the most important thing to learn from Tesla. And even Eric Dollard said that, as far as I remember him saying something along the same lines. Um, in other words, the heart of what he was showing was in that lecture in 93, well, 92 as well. And you'll see the various patents about it. So we'll go over that one wire and then wireless. And then there's other points that you need to come to on your own in this as you put it all together and you figure it out and you realize some very important surprises. Um, so again, what we want to do with this kit here is um, So it could be this way as well. What we want to do is, let me just try it. Show, well, that's the way it, it stands normally. So now I'm going to go on the top. Oops. Sure, everything's connected. Oh, oh I gotta turn it right side up. Anyway, kind of flimsy here, but uh, so again, what I was saying is. We take what we learn from this kit and apply it to the motors. So all the motors that have been previously sold will be able to use this um, learning to then accomplish what I always intended for these kits um, so that you can, like I said, multiply the energy out and do some really interesting things. So that's where you get into the very precise that's where we needed all the coils to be exactly the same. We needed to have a specific core material. Um, we needed to have the ability to adjust the, the timing. And um, so if you look carefully at some of the people that are more skilled in this, you'll see over the years um, that they were using that in their systems, but they never re revealed that to the general public. And so that's something very important to, um, to understand in the history of this science. So let's see if there's anything else to say. Um, 
that should pretty well cover it. I uh, thank you all who have been waiting on these kits for your patience. I wanted to make sure they were done really well. And uh, it's been a busy time of the year with the holidays and everything. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy.